August 27th, uh, we do have a quorum. And so Harrison lives in the convention. All right. Invocation, we please. Stand, please. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus, thanking you for this day. I ask you to bless each one that's assembled here, giving us your spirit and your wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we can be a unity and that we could be a blessing to the community. And Lord, we'll be, honored, we'll be grateful to give you the praise and glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, we're ready for the pledge. Ready, set, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Cor, would you call the roll, please? <laughs> Here. Here. Reed. Here. Brown. Here. Harrison? Here. Richard? Here. Mayor? Here. <clears throat> we, uh, on citizens' comments on non-agenda items, residents may address the council regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda. Residents must provide their name and address, and council requests that comments be limited to five minutes. Didn't have anybody sign up. Is there anyone in the audience? Seeing no one, we will go to the consent agenda. All matters listed under consent agenda are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. The agenda tonight consists of A, approval of minutes from July 26, 2019, special meeting of the Callister City Council. B, approval of minutes from the August 13, 20, 2019, special meeting of the Callister City Council. C, approval of claims for August 7, 2019 through August 20, 2019. D, consider and act upon accepting the change order from Western Interior the amount of $4,520 for the painting <clears throat> of the library trim. E, consider and act upon a request by Charles Everett on behalf of Savannah High School to partner with them for the rental fee and use of room 101 <clears throat> of the McAllister Expo Center for the annual ACT prep testing. F, consider and act upon a request by Charles Everett on behalf of Savannah High School to partner with them for the rental fee and use of room 101 of the McAllister Expo Center for annual ACT prep testing. G, consider and act upon indefinitely postponing tort claim filed by Lindley's Paint and Body Shop. And H, consider and act upon indefinitely postponing to tort claim filed by Summer Barone. Would anyone like anything removed? Oh, okay. On uh, H. H. I, uh, could someone explain that? To, uh, maybe well, we'll have to remove it and then we'll talk about okay. it. Okay. Right. Any, anyone else? D. D. Okay. Any, anyone else? All right, I take a motion and a second to approve items A, B, C, E, F, and G. Motion Councilman Reed, second, second Councilman Brown. Any discussion? Court, you call the roll, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. We'll just go from the top down. Councilman Pritchard? Uh, has this work already been completed? It has. Is this the, I don't know much about change orders. Sure. Is this typically how it works? Is the work gets completed and then we approve the expenditure? It's within my authority and it, and it falls within the 15% allowable on the state bidding process. So 15% um, is about almost $6,000 of the original bid. So I approved the change order in order to, because the contractor was, he was gonna have to pull off and wouldn't be back for quite some time because they were going to another big job. So we had him finish the job. What this is, is hand railings, uh, steps, things that we didn't think about when we uh, first put the bid out. So uh, so this is, I don't know how to describe this, but the big green part of the building, do you know what I mean? So there's, the building I guess has like a windows and then, cause it's all concrete exterior. And then there's things that come down. Yeah, and that got painted green. Is this part of that change order? No, this is almost all related to handrails. Um, we also had them power wash everything ahead of time, the handrails and the stairs. And then when you walk in the main part of the library off of the parking lot, uh -huh. we had all those stairs power washed and then painted bright yellow so that there weren't any tripping hazards going forward. Um, just a okay. lot of stuff like that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Take a motion and a second to approve item D. Motion Councilman Smith. Second Councilman Brown. Any further discussion? 
Corey Jacala, roll please. Councilman Smith? Yes. Brown? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Reed? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. Item H, Councilman. Councilwoman Harrison. Oh, all right. Uh, I, if you don't mind, I would like uh, Attorney Urban to explain uh, yes, item number I, H, please. I guess uh, that's my standing instruction to the county clerk when she gets a tort claim. We need to, because it's, it comes before the council, mm -hmm. uh, we need to allow some time for the insurance company to investigate the claim to see if it's a meritorious claim and if they want to settle you know, or try to settle it or do something with it. Okay. But it's really just to buy an additional 90 days in order to allow the insurance company to investigate the claim. Okay. So what I've asked the clerk to do is mm -hmm. just to uh, have it, have you all postpone it. At the end of 90 days, the claim is, is deemed denied. And so at that point, uh, the, uh, uh, claimant is available is is free to file suit if they want to. They can't file suit for that 90 days. But if they wish to file suit, they'd have to wait until the 90 days passes mm -hmm. to allow the insurance company time to investigate the claim. Okay. Are so you saying it's automatically denied uh, no, during that time, or it, no, it's just a it, process? I think if we approve the claim initially. <laughs> without giving the opportunity to the insurance company to mm -hmm. uh, investigate, then we would have ra waived our uh, coverage and okay. then we would end up end up paying the claim and the insurance company would be off the hook. But we have a contract with the liability carrier mm -hmm. to provide that coverage. And so really it's theirs to uh, consider and they okay. should investigate the claim during that time if it just comes up for approval uh -huh. then they have no time to investigate the claim oh, okay so has uh, the reason i'm asking because she's a ward five resident and she told me about the situation yeah, well, and so i'm I, aware I of it a little bit the, mm -hmm. i looked at the pictures and all yes. and i i would agree that it looks like there may be a claim there okay. but the insurance carrier needs to and i did right. check the exemptions and it okay. doesn't appear to be fall in any exemptions to the tort claims act but that you know before the tort claims act uh -huh. we did not have any right to insure against the this type of casualty okay. but now we do but there are limits and conditions okay. and one of those is that 90-day period okay. where they can't sue and uh, so we need to take advantage of that okay. in the city okay. in order to allow our insurance carrier to investigate the claim. Oh, okay. And she is aware of this 90 day uh, well, time? I don't know if she is or not. Apparently, oh. you weren't. No, I wasn't. I, that's the reason I'm bringing to, it up. I needed up. to explain that because okay. I, I didn't realize that, that uh, you know, we tend to cross over that. Oh, okay. Maybe, that's, but, that's all right. That's yes, why I'm bringing it up. Uh, if you would you just mentioned it to her that okay. uh, we're not denying her claim, okay. but we are allowing the insurance company to look into it. And she uh, apparently, according to this note, it has already been referred to our insurance company. Mm -hmm. I see that. So they should be contacting her to investigate the claim and see if it's a meritorious claim. And they can settle this claim between <laughs> the two of them without the city being involved. Oh, okay. But but we need to allow our insurance company that opportunity. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for handling that. Any other questions? I'm going to uh, ask the council one thing. You know, one, if, that's, if this is denied, does she have a right to appeal at any place? She has that's a right to sue. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's so, she's yeah. forestalled from suing under our law until the 90 days passes. Mm -hmm. At that time, the claim is deemed denied if, if you all don't take it back and, you know, do something with it before that 90 days. Okay. Because I've seen some of these claims, and usually they don't get paid. Yeah. Well, so, I think uh, hopefully they're they're but, Yeah, they, well, I, I think they're always here. Yeah. So well, that's, that's my point. Well, okay. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay. you. Right. Any other questions? But. I take a motion and a second to approve item H. Motion Councilman Smith. Second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? 
Or would you call the roll, please? Kelsey Smith? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. We're on to public hearing. All persons interested in any ordinance listed under scheduled business shall have an opportunity to be heard in accordance with Article 2, Section 212B of the City Charter. We have two tonight. The first is an ordinance amending Chapter 106, Utilities of the McAllister City Code, amending Article 6, Regulations of Utility Lines, amending Chapter 48, Fees, Charges, and Service Rates, repealing all conflicting ordinances and providing for severability. The second is an ordinance of the City of McAllister, Oklahoma, established amending ordinance number 2626, which established the budget for fiscal year 2018 and 2019 repealing all conflicting ordinances and providing for a, a severability clause and declaring an emergency. Make a motion to the second to open the public hearing. So motion to Councilor Reed, second Vice Mayor Stevens. Any discussion? Court to call the roll, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor? Yes. And we are now in a public hearing. Would anybody like to address us concerning the first? Seeing no one, anybody want to address us at the second? Still seeing no one, I take a motion to second to close public hearing. Motion Councilman Reed. Second Vice Mayor Stevens. Any discussion? Court, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Smith? Yes. Brown? Yes. Mayor? Yes. We are on to agenda <laughs> item number one. Consider and act upon an ordinance amending <clears throat> McAllister City Code Chapter 106. Utilities, Article 6, Regulation of Utility Lines, Amending Chapter 48 Fees, Charges, and Service Rates for Filling All Conflicting Ordinances and Providing for Severability. Ms. Clifton. Good evening. Um, this item uh, comes before you due to um, a request from a utility uh, services provider wanting to put small wireless facilities in a right-of-way. And um, also there were some changes in state law under the Oklahoma Small Wireless Facilities Act. When we went to go review their requests, we found in the codes that they were a little bit dated. Um, it all pertained to lines that were underground, not above ground. So we felt that there was a, a need to update that to put what we were doing, you know, in the codes. Um, we initially brought the ordinance to you in May 28th. And um, due to some concerns with the um, local utility companies, um, we ended up pulling that, met with them twice and uh, made sure that what we were doing with these codes worked with you know, their, their business model and, and some of the things that they do um, internally. Um, so we made some of those changes, also um, made some um, uh, changes there for um, like in the event of emergency and to allow them to be able to work without having to go through the permitting and the permitting fee and so forth. So um, basically that's what we did with this and we just request um, an approval uh, to this ordinance to update it. <clears throat> Any questions? Take a motion and second to a motion, Councilman Smith. Second, Councilman Harrison. Any further discussion? Court, you call the roll, please. Councilman Smith? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Mayor? Yes. The motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. We're on to agenda item number two. Consider an act of final <coughs> ordinance amending ordinance number 2626, which established the budget for fiscal year 2018-19, repealing all conflicting ordinances, providing for severability clause, and declaring an emergency. Ms. Irvin. Mayor, Council, um, Exhibit A1 is um, Fund 11 in our employment employee retirement fund, and it's a budget amendment to uh, a account for the extra payments that were made throughout the year when retirees are added to the list. Um, it, exhibit A2 is for um, grants and contributions that were made close to the end of the year so that we can just uh, account for those balances in the in the budgets. We, we love this fund because this is um, uh, the July 4th where First National Bank donated the 10000 um, the, the extra expense for the different parks and the OSU wellness uh, is a, a grant. So, free money. Free money. We like to partner with people. Any questions? Make a motion and a second to approve. Motion, Councilman Reed. Second, Councilman Smith. Any further discussion? Court, you call the roll, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Smith. Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. 
Harrison? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. Agenda item number three, discussion yes. and update on the Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, take a motion and second on the emergency. Move to Council Reed, second Captain Vice Mayor Stevens. Any discussion? Court, you call the roll, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Smith? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. Now on to agenda item number three, discussion and update on financials. This is as of July 31st, the general fund at a glance. Um, we are slightly under budget in our revenues um, and slightly over in our expenditures, exactly the opposite of what you want to be. But a lot of our expenditures are front end loaded and this is the first month of our fiscal year, so we pay up front. Um, so it explains the expenditures. And then the, and when we look at the sales tax a little later, you'll see that the sales tax is actually up. Um, the revenues on the MPWA is slight, are, they are slightly under budget, and the, but the expenditures are even more under budget. And then we go to the next page and we have um, the sales tax through August. And as you can see, July was up uh, for sales tax, even above the last two years. And then August is right almost exact uh, where we were last year. And then the following one is the use tax. And we have July and August numbers for you. Um, and again, August numbers are, are way up. And again, the trend line really shows that this one is continually uh, going up. The water sales in the water districts, um, it's been a wet year. What can I say? Um, our revenues are down in both um, compared to last year at this time. But um, if you look at July numbers, they were actually like the end of May and June uh, time frame. So that was when we were very wet and getting a lot of rain. And then, then the final report is your cash in the bank, the treasurer's report. <coughs> Any questions, comments? Council okay, Mayor? What can we do to make an adjustment if, if we're, it's, it's spending more than we're taking in. What needs to be changed? Um, uh, on the revenues and expenditures, mm -hmm. um, we budget uh, according to you know what we estimated, and this just says that we uh, the expenditures are more than we. Uh, I mean, it's they're within the the the. How can I say this? They're within, uh, they're, they're, the overage is immaterial, immaterial as far as that's uh, within 1%, uh, less than 1% above what we are. And the expenditures are above that because um, we have big um, software um, IT expenses that we pay a year in advance because that's the way they want to be paid. And so we expense them all in July. Um, so that tends to uh, average out over the year. Mm -hmm. um, so, so are you saying you allocate money, but it's just not enough? Is this what you're saying? No, these are actual expenditures. We just had more expenditures in the month of July than we did revenues. Thank you. If, if I could, <coughs> Councilwoman, uh, we tend to look at the city over a year's period of okay. time this is a snapshot one month okay uh, and it is front loaded this will all equal itself out over a year okay and if we if we happen to see that our revenues are not meeting budget uh -huh. and our expenditures are up we will adjust internally okay. as to how we manage the city and we we, we do that throughout the entire year oh, okay. so we watch these numbers very closely and we adjust accordingly could you give us an example of what would be an adjustment? Uh, we might hold back a little bit on maybe some street improvements or a street improvement project, okay. uh, put more effort into uh, using our equipment and, and maybe cleaning some things instead okay. of going out and spending $50,000 on a road. Okay. But we would keep our crews busy with needed efforts within the city. Oh, that would cost less. That would cost less, okay. yes ma'am. Okay, thank you. Just, just one other thing. We do a mid-year budget review the count, that comes to the council. Okay. So we'll be, we're, we're kept up on it in that manner as okay. well. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. 
the fund balances on this, I did forget to, it, it's estimated until we get through our audit. And so these, these are estimated fund balances for the beginning of the year. Um, once we do our adjusting entries and everything is passed by our auditors, then I take that estimated off of the report. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? All right, we will move to agenda item number four. Uh, discussion of possible action on the inclusion of bike lanes to be created along 14th Street from South Street to MacArthur and along MacArthur from 14th Street to 9th Street. Vice Mayor Stevens. Thank you. Um, just to kind of bring the council up to speed on kind of how this came about, a couple discussions. The mayor and myself had a couple discussions um, as well as the city manager too, but there was a, a post I'm realizing more and more how social media plays into our lives, but there was a post that I, the mayor was tagged in and I started reading that and then I was also tagged in about basically increased speed and you've seen some of these traffic surveys we just got from the police department this evening along 14th Street. Um, this is something that I've gotten a lot of calls on since I've been a councilman with speed on 14th Street, really on MacArthur on 13th as well. Um, basically where there's a lot of families that live in these areas, uh, children that bike and walk, we have the school system right there as well too, but really just an issue of speed that, you know, it's it, it's a road that I'm not going to throw stones at people from speeding. I wish they wouldn't, but I've also got pulled over for speeding yesterday. So in the city of McAllister. So therefore, as much as I'd like to say that this is bad people at times, this is not. This is people that I think naturally with the tendency that we have in some of our streets and roads along 14th, especially, it's a clear shot. It's all the way from the last stop sign you see is on MacArthur. Um, and looking at the comprehensive plan, talking to the city manager and the mayor as well, I think this is a small way that we can start to include some different forms of transportation along 14th there and then tying back into our parks and, and other things as well. But it's also something that can help mitigate the speed over time. And there's also a stop sign that needs to be placed in here as well. And I, I've proposed somewhere around Illinois where we make it a three-way stop just like on MacArthur. Um, I don't know if any of you guys received the articles that I sent or if you had time to review those. I apologize. I didn't get them to you sooner. Um, but I thought this was a good way for us to discuss as a council and especially with in light of the comprehensive plan. And if you guys want to, I brought it with me. I can pass it around. Page 130 actually defines exactly what we're talking about tonight. It's called a complete street where we add these forms. It's a way to kind of mitigate speed and traffic in those forms, but I figured we could discuss it and then wanted to go forward. We could approve that this evening to start along this process as well. I like the idea of bike lanes. I think it'd be great if we had them virtually every city in town. Yeah, I, good. But, uh, um, and I do think it definitely needs to be a stop sign at mm -hmm. Illinois. Uh, something we do need to add when we, when we do this though, is I don't think we have it now, is we need an ordinance that uh, addresses if the car drives in a bike lane. No problem. Okay. You know, so we need to uh, make, it, make it where it's safe no and, and where there's a, you know, a penalty if you, uh, mm -hmm. if you put other people in danger. Absolutely. Uh, Councilwoman Harris. Oh, um, is it okay to address the bike lane? You're actually supposed to address the oh, chair. Okay, I'll address it. All right. Um, how is the uh, bike registration, uh, how is that coming along with the police department if we're going to have a bike lane? We, we will probably have it on the uh, September 24th agenda. That's correct, Mayor. Yeah. Oh, we have the preliminary draft at this time. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, I don't know what other word to say, but people are calling certain folks bike bandits. <laughs> uh, that's the nicest way to put it. Um, how is that going to be addressed? You know, people that are just well, on their bikes. Just I think, I think if you're on that, I think you probably need to put that in your, in the, your comments at the end of the meeting. Okay. Cause it's, it's not actually covered in okay. under this. All right. Thank you. Any, any council read? I have to apologize. Mr. Stacey ahead of time. He told me only had five minutes to, talk about this <laughs> but uh when i saw this on the agenda and first of all i'd like to just say i don't oppose bike lanes uh as long as the bike lanes are you know uh are safe not only for the bicyclists but also for the the motoring public and you can you know safely install these in the streets that we have uh but when i saw this and i'm not even sure how i heard about it that it was being done in order to address speed on 14th and MacArthur. And I know, <clears throat> I know from experience that a lot of times people believe that people are speeding 
and it, because it's a perception. They don't know that. They just perceive that they're they're speeding. Uh, and, it, and a lot of times it's because there's an increased level of traffic. Uh, it could be because of uh, loud mufflers, all kinds of things. But it's, it's not necessarily because people are actually speeding. And if that's the reason, if that's the reason we're installing this, these bike lanes, uh, I, I think we need to, to address that part. <laughs> So since, since I know that the police department aggressively uh, investigates complaints, all complaints, and I would assume they would investigate speeding complaints on 14th and MacArthur, Monday I asked Chief Wansick, how, how many speeding tickets had been written on 14th Street and on MacArthur in the last 12 months? And the answer was on 14th Street, there was nine tickets written on MacArthur, there were seven. That's not even one a month. That doesn't indicate to me that there's a speeding problem on either one of those streets. It just means that you got some people that got, happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But Chief Wanzig took that and he did some directed patrol, had, had uh, some radar run on 14th Street on the, what's the day? Monday and Tuesday, I guess. And that's where this traffic survey came from. And with the exception of, of the three second ward violators who actually live on 14th Street, those were the only tickets that were written. So once again, I, I, th I think the, the speed on 14th Street is a perception on, on the part of people. And if, if that's the reason we're putting the bike lanes in, I. I I would suggest we reevaluate that. If we're putting the bike lanes in because we want to put bike lanes in to make it safer for bicyclists to to uh, navigate through the streets, fine. Let's 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 address it from that perspective. But I don't think we should be addressing it from a speed perspective because I don't think that's the case here. Uh, so one other thing I did was <clears throat> I went out there and I looked at these two streets and I measured. See how wide they were, and they're they're 26 feet wide, which is the the minimum width of a, a local street according to our city ordinance. <coughs> now, I couldn't find anything in our city ordinance that talks about uh, what type of streets bike lanes can be put in, uh, the placement within the street. Uh, uh, the size of the bike lanes, anything. I can't find anything. I don't know if there's anything in there. I'm just missing it. But I don't see anything in our city ordinances that talk about bike lanes on city streets. We talk briefly about bike paths and that the, the city council can designate what a bike path is and where you can put it and things like that. But there's nothing that talks about that, that gives the city council guidance other than just to shoot from the hip at what feels good whether or not you should put a, a bike path in a street or not. And I suggest that that's, that's kind of reckless to do that because it, you know, it, it can be dangerous. If you narrow those lanes too much, for example, on 14th street, you have storm drains on both sides of that street, which means you can't put the bike, bike path in that, in that two foot curb apron. So you, you've lost four feet of the street just because of that. Sorry, I didn't get that. And then if you put a four foot wide bike lane in there, now you're down to 18 feet on uh, width on 14th Street. A nine foot lane for each, each lane of travel. The recommended width, minimum width for a uh, travel lane is 10 feet. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, this, this, this could, goes along with our warrants for a for a 26 foot wide street because you're allowed to put an eight foot parking lane in there. Now, there's no parking allowed on 14th Street and there's no parking in the street on, on MacArthur. However, on MacArthur, there's only one no parking sign on that entire street. And that's right there in front of Mike Deakfield. Uh, there's several on 14th. <clears throat> uh, 
you've got some other signage issues on 14th and and uh in MacArthur on on 14th the speed limit is 30 miles an hour but if you turn off of if you turn off of 14th on the MacArthur there's not a speed limit sign that goes down to 25 miles an hour until you get down to the park there's nothing in that block between 13th and 14th they they don't know how fast or what the speed limit is they're coming off of 30 mile an hour street but technically they're going on 25 but it's not marked signage I'm, I'm telling you signage is terrible on on MacArthur and on 14th Street. If you if you want people to obey the law, you need to tell them what that law is. And I mean, I don't even know how you could enforce it really. I mean, it'd be difficult ba based upon the signs that's out there right now. Uh, but what I'd like to see, I'd like to see the city staff do it. And we're, uh, Mr. Stacey tells me we're fixing to put bike lanes on Monroe. Um, I'd, I'd like to see some in our in our uh, ordinance, and it's it's a uh, 62-606, I think. It talks about uh, streets. It talks about sizes of uh, you know parking and things like that. I'd like to see something about these bike lanes added to that, so <laughs> so that everybody knows what the minimum street requirements are. What, what's the minimum uh, width of these bike lanes? Where can you put them? Uh, rather than just sending a couple of guys out, out, to, out to 14th Street with a paintbrush and a bicycle stencil and tell them just do it. You know, there, there's more involved in that. Mr. Hornick, is he, he was here early, but he's gone now. So anyway, uh, those are my comments. Like I said, I don't oppose the bike lanes, uh, but I, I do think there, there needs to be more thought put into it, and there needs to be something in our ordinances that addresses the bike lanes. This is, this is something new, you know, that we're doing here in McAllister. And I, th I think that, you know, we need to do that up front before we start going out stencing the streets. Vice Mayor Stevens. I, I really don't disagree with really the majority, if not all of it, that Councilman Reed said, I think he makes a lot of valid points. I think a lot of it's very true. I think this is in giving you my reasoning a little bit for why I, I think that this is a good decision to go forward with it is that it does accomplish a lot of the things that you just discussed. Uh, if we say this is just for speed and speed only, then I'm, I'm not going to, I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think that that's, that's wrong, but I think it helps accomplish a lot of the things that the comprehensive plan tried to tackle with us and tell us that we need to have some other speed mitigating things as well as we need to make it easily more easily accessible for people in our community to travel around without just cars. I think he's right on maybe creating something in our codes as well that helps us tackle this because going forward I would I would guess and, and Pete please correct me if I'm wrong that a lot of our streets are varying in size. They're not they always I, and, and I would assume in our older neighborhoods that really probably varies. Um, through probably newer streets and it became more standardized at times. Um, so I think going forward, I think that would be a great decision to start trying to tackle that and think about it because this isn't something that I think should go away. I, this is something that we need to address as a council and, and make it easier and more, more easily accessible for lots of different people being on just driving a car. So I would like to make the motion to approve what we're discussing tonight with the addition of the stop signs, but then also work on adding this to our language with the bikes with Councilman Reed said as well. <clears throat> let me, let me see, let me see. Just refresh my memory. You know, we had that plan for walking tracks. Or walking we do. Can I, can I hold, you out, hold you out for a second? So yeah. I can see if there's a second to the motion. So oh. let, let me see if there's, is there a second? Okay. Second by Councilwoman Harrison. It wouldn't come out. <laughs> On that plan, did we have bicycle? We have on on and off street. All we have all means of transportation. We have bike lanes designated. We have sidewalks designated. We have paths that we will be walking paths, bike paths that'll be built throughout the city. We There's multiple. We do. There are multiple multiple avenues. Are these streets included in that plan? Um, that is. We, did, we didn't check the plan, but I can tell you that that plan is just kind of an overall footprint of, 
an idea. That plan is gonna is gonna be adapted to the needs of the city. That plan. I'm not saying that. <coughs> You know, there's some areas where you can't put a bike lane in, but you can put a sidewalk in the right of way to move people. Um, so you can ride your bike on the sidewalk or you could walk on the sidewalk. There's some areas where you want to uh, tie in different areas of the community so you can put in a bike path that goes along a power line or a drainage ditch or those type of things. So, so I'm just wondering if we ought to look at that plan. We can. And see what streets primary i was kind of how did you pick 14th and macarthur uh 14th and macarthur this is where i had told you we had been contacted on facebook and other things and i thought this was a good way to start exploring this option but then also use a little bit of a pilot i don't live that far away from here i drive this pretty frequently um i see policemen patrolling it quite often um to me this is an area it's around the school system there it's close to the park i see a lot of people walking down the street I see people riding their bicycles and I see people sometimes <laughs> perception, possibly so too. But I thought this was a good area for us to try it in an area that is getting that traffic. Um, I get a lot of families that contact me from this that want to see more sidewalks so their kids can walk to school. This is one of those ones that I look at and go, well, I would like to see someday our whole our city as a whole add a lot of these elements to it to make it easier on the rest of our community. Okay. People possibly that don't have cars and things like that. But I also looked at this as, as a a really good pilot area to start this process to see how our citizens react to see if this is something that we want because overwhelmingly since i've started this discussion or i've had people i've had people reach out to, to me on this now do i believe this is the sole purpose to mitigate speed and traffic no I, I don't do i think that this can help and this can lead to other discussions about possibly why are we designing our roads in a way that encourages speed and traffic yeah i do but i think this is why I, i've gone this direction here with councilman smith <laughs> well, I'm just thinking maybe if we looked at that overall plan, we could prioritize where we start a pilot program for bike lanes, where they would, this may be the best place, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like Travis and thinking we need an ordinance and maybe look at that plan and see where are the bike lanes, the best places for them to move the most number of people by bicycle. I, and I, I don't, don't see it much as a speed thing, but a, a bicycling thing. Well, I see it as is a component, if I may. Yeah. I see it as a component that actually it all fits together. You know, if the research, the articles I said, the stuff I've read, it shows that the wider the street, typically, the faster the people drive. I think that's very true. I think in reality, though, too, as well as a community, we continue to stretch and stretch and stretch, and we look at the highway and what's happening on those plans right now and how fast people drive out there. It, it shouldn't be like that in our city streets. We ought to accommodate lots of different forms of traffic. And in this area, we get a lot of different forms of transportation with bikes, walking, cars, things like that. So to me, pilot this out, I it ties into our trails. I get a lot of speed on 6th Street. Yeah. I just yeah. figure it's enforcement. Yeah. You know, well, I, some people are going to drive. It doesn't matter where they are. They're no, drive you're absolutely back. right. It's like one of the articles you had in, mm -hmm. you, know, yeah, yeah. you know, the rural people on little country roads, they're... Mm -hmm. Six miles an hour. Yeah, well, and, and it, it may it struck me in that that article that I sent you too is that it defines rural kind of rural America and it talks about rural right. Oklahoma. Seventy seven percent of the deaths of pedestrians are in rural Oklahoma. I would classify us as rural Oklahoma. And I, I think this is a way for us to tackle it and go forward in tying into the master plan and things yeah. like that. Those city folks don't have any time to get up to speed. <laughs> you know, they have traffic jams. So what do you think, Pete? You know, as, as we've started addressing this, we've been able to get a lot of information on uh, ODOT has a program called Safe Routes to School that we will be requesting um, uh, grant applications in the future. You know, what you want to focus on is how you're going to move some of those smaller kids. So we look, we look at the schools and how you grow that out and be able to move those kids safely. You know, I live <coughs> south of town, as everybody's aware of, and I see kids every day walking on the grass down 9th Street trying to get to south. You know, they could cut back over to the park, but they're coming down 9th Street. There's no sidewalks. They're walking on the grass. It's just a route system that we need to focus on all of our schools and start building that system. So to this specifically, what do you think? About bike routes? Well, these bike routes. 
I, the first. I don't, I don't ride 14th Street. As everybody knows, I'm an avid bike rider. I don't ride it. It's too narrow for me. Um, I stick more to wider streets, uh, some of the back streets. Um, I don't know. I haven't been on 14th Street on my bike, but I'll ride it. I ride MacArthur. <laughs> MacArthur, I feel pretty safe on. If I, if, can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Councilman, you said that you measured MacArthur. Is it wider? It's about a foot wide. Okay, just a foot. I measured it out at 27. I measured it at the corner of uh, 13th and MacArthur. Councilman Pritchard. Uh, how much is this going to cost? How much do you think this is going to cost? About a buck and a half a foot to paint stripes on the, on the roadway. We've looked into that. Uh, do you have to start changing out the grates on the stormwater uh, grates? Those grates can be pulled. You can change the diagonal, the, the, the direction of them, and be able to use that grate somewhere else in the city. But you are going to incur that cost, but you'll have that other grate to, to use somewhere else. Um, there's not a tremendous amount of money involved in putting in bike routes. You have some signage. I can tell you that we have a TSEC grant uh, that's been awarded to the city and I believe we have 30. You remember, Stephanie, how many how many signs we have for, for bike routes uh, in storage right now for the future? So we'll be able to identify those off street bike lanes. So did you say how much a dollar and a half? About a dollar and a half a foot for paint. So what are we talking, how far are we talking about doing on 14th Street? Is that? From south to MacArthur. Okay. It's about 1,300 feet. Okay. Oh, that's not right. The last numbers I saw was about so, a yeah, dollar That's and a half That's foot. half of it, I'm sorry. It's about 2,600 feet. Councilman Harrison. Uh, in this measurement that was done, is that uh, including just a standard vehicle, or are we talking about uh, trucks, you know, that are going through there? And what, when you're talking about this 26 feet wide, what what was, you know, what did that entail? We tend is it to, just a standard vehicle? We tend to uh, focus on passenger vehicles. <laughs> okay. okay. And then also, is it going to be a two-sided uh, bike lanes are just on one side. That hasn't been determined. Hasn't been determined. And then when we're talking about bicycles, there's some that are three wheelers. Is that considered a bicycle too? It's called a tricycle. A tricycle, but, but right? It's, I see adults. It's a non-motorized vehicle. Yeah. So is like that included bicycle. in it? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mayor Councilman Brown. I was listening uh, to the councilman talk about the speed. Now, if it drops down to 35 to 25, is that going to be a problem? Somebody get a ticket? maybe they don't know it's 25. Does that take care of all the extra problems with the ticket? Or do we need to change anything to make it 35 instead of 25? I think that, I think what he said was it's, it's 30 on 14th. Oh, 30, I'm sorry. 25 on MacArthur, but it's not marked on MacArthur. So, so it needs to be marked. Okay. So, so, so something else that uh, I noticed uh, in the city code was that in a, for a local street, 26 feet wide, the speed limit is supposed to be 25 miles an hour. But yet, 14 streets, 14 is 30 miles an hour. So it be changed. If, if you go by the city code, it should be. <clears throat> Councilman, what we'll be doing is sending out traffic control this week to determine consistency in the area and make sure that we're following the ordinances. Councilman Reed brought up some some interesting questions uh, about consistency out there. And we need to make sure that we are consistent and how we, how the, how the traveling public uh, is notified what those speed limits and everything are out there. So okay. we'll, be, we'll be working on that this week. Okay. Is this something we need to rush into with Councilman uh, going to you, Mayor? Is it something that we could delay a little bit till we can get all the studies? Or would, uh, would the Honorable Vice Mayor be uh, Mayor? Okay with that. 
to me, I, I don't really think that this is anything other than approving this area and then allow city staff to actually target it and start investigating it. I mean, if, if it's going to cost $25,000 to do this, I'm fairly certain the city manager is going to come back before us and say, hey, guys, this is something that maybe we should hold off on. But with everything that we've seen in the comprehensive plan, the discussion we had last council meeting on it, I don't see that there's any holdup to doing this or at least starting the process on it because they're going to be doing it on Monroe already. <laughs> I do remember that from the discussion are, and yes. Councilman Reed bringing it up as well. And then with this, I, I don't see that this is two different areas in our community that we can actually look at, target, and see you going forward. I would like to go ahead and go forward with the vote tonight, but I don't think this binds in any such way as it has to be done immediately. I just think it's something that we add the stop signs. Um, they're on Illinois or View, one of those. And then we also proceed forward with the bike lanes with the discussion on that, because I think that this comprehensive plan is going to address and force us to start looking at a lot of new things. And I think if we don't continually refer to it and see where it is and hear from our citizens that helped put all this together, it wasn't just some outside firm that came in and decided who we were gonna be and then told us that. I mean, they came in with an outside eye, looked at it and said, hey, here's some things, but here's a lot of things your city said. This is one of the things that they targeted and talked a lot about. So I'd like to see us go forward with it this evening. Would you would you be willing to amend it to uh, the inclusion of the bike lanes upon completion of the uh, the ordinance being ordinances being presented to the council? Uh, because I I, like I said, I think we definitely need one to protect the bike riders. Yeah, um, that, and that would be fine. And we do need Absolutely. to we do need to establish what a bike lane is. That'd be fine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Would you? Would like you take that second? Who, oh, uh, Councilwoman second. Harrison, second. Oh, second. Okay. Oh, would, you, would you be okay with that amended ordinance? And yes, I, I think it's great. Did uh, Did you have something? No, I was I was going to say if we need to do anything else. Okay. Is there any any further discussion? Clergy Colorado, please. Vice <clears throat> Mayor Stevens. Yes. Councilwoman Harrison. Yes. Councilman Smith. Yes. Reed. Yes. Brown. Yes. Richard. Yes. Mayor. Yes, the motion carries. We are on to new business. Any matter not known or which could not have been reasonably foreseen prior to the time of posting the agenda in accordance with Section 311.9, Title 25, Oklahoma State Statutes. Do we have any new business? I do not, Mayor. In that case, let's uh, go to the city manager's report. Mayor, members of the council, um, just a couple items for you tonight. First and foremost, I want to congratulate Jamie Clifton. Jamie uh, was recognized last week at the Chamber. Uh, of Commerce Dinner, annual dinner, as the Community Development Director, Community Leader of the Year uh, for her work with the Comprehensive Plan and the work that she does in planning and zoning and codes. So congratulations. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> Speech. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize uh, Councilman Pritchard, Councilman Pritchard in 345. You were... <laughs> given the award of Small Business of the Year. Congratulations, that's wonderful. So. Can we do a pause think, on that one too? Sure. <laughs> there you go. Um, I think he's buying beer for everybody afterwards, so. Um, not, not true. <laughs> that's why. I, I can try, right? You can try all you want. Uh, the last thing I have, Mayor and Council, um, I'm going on vacation starting tomorrow. I will not be back until a week from this Thursday. Uh, as usual, as as normal, you can call me if you have any concerns. I'm going to be in town, be around. Uh, in my absence, of course, Assistant City Manager Tony Irvin will be in charge. Uh, feel free to contact her any time of the day or night, and uh, she will answer your phone calls. That's all I have there. Uh, remarks and inquiries. Council Smith, Vice Mayor Stevens. I, I would like to give somebody a little bit of praise and thank you, uh, City Manager, uh, Assistant City Manager, and then Bates Instrumentation, Dalton Carlton, for finally getting <laughs> the manhole fixed on Strong. I don't have to worry about hitting it anymore. It's perfect. <laughs> um, and I just want to say thank you. I'm glad we've got a lot of good people that, that donated their time and energy to getting that fixed. And I, I'm understanding they paid for all that themselves to get it all done. If I, am I correct in doing all that? They donated that to the city? They did. Uh, okay. Took care of it themselves. And okay. It cost me a bet, but I, but it got done. That was a good bet. A good <laughs> so bet. I just want to say thank you to them, and, and I appreciate your guys' hard work. Thank you. Oh, you bet. Yeah. 
Council, Councilman Brown. I don't have anything. Thank Councilwoman Harrison. Oh uh, yes, I uh, went on a tour with uh, to through the McAllister Regional Health Center, and I was really impressed with what they're doing there. And two cement benches have been purchased for the Northtown Cemetery, and they'll be installed whenever the city's not really busy. And I would like to thank the uh, the directors of the uh, city crews for all the work that they've done. We've had some water breaks and leaks and sinkholes, and I think they've done a good job in getting those addressed. So thank you so much. Councilman Pritchard. Uh, city Manager, what is the plan, the next step with the comprehensive plan? Are we going to adopt that, or how does that work? We will be bringing it back for adoption. That's correct. When do you anticipate that will happen? The second meeting in September is the plan right now. And if I could, Mayor, could I, Councilman, could I say one other thing? Uh, we handed out the master drainage plan tonight. Uh, that was a plan that was developed with a tremendous amount of input from the general public on things that they see in our community. And that plan has now, uh, it's in a preliminary form for your review. And we will be bringing that back at the second meeting in September also for adoption. So please review it. Any comments that you have, please get them to us immediately so that uh, we can evaluate them and possibly make them a part of the plan. So it's a good plan. Have we gotten a CFO hired yet? We have not. Uh, we were turned down with our offer to uh, a potential candidate, and we are now going to go back out and advertise again. What do you, I mean, are we, are we adequately, do you have the resources to hire a CFO? We do. I mean, in terms of whatever it is. Compensation, benefits, benefits budget, every, yeah. we do, yes, sir. Okay. We do. Um, same question on the, <laughs> I don't know if I have the job position right, but the utility supervisor, is that the right title? It is. Okay. Have we hired one of those yet? We have not. We've interviewed. Uh, we are actually waiting on one of our employees who is <coughs> testing this week, and we have a potential in-house candidate, uh, depending on uh, how that testing goes this week. Good. Okay. Thank you. Mayor? Yes. I was going to ask the city manager. I know we ask this sometimes, but what are the requirements? Degrees in accounting for us, you know, chief for, financial, for chief CFO, financial officer. Yes, sir. Yeah, you want yeah. somebody that's uh, uh, minimum has a degree in accounting. Uh, you'd like to, for them to be past the CPA exam and potentially a master's degree if they have it. Uh, this is a high level position uh, okay. that takes a lot of skill, knowledge, and a lot of experience. Okay. So, so you want to be a CPA? Is that what you say? We would like to have them. Yeah. Our that exam is hard. Tony, <laughs> she, she, you're going to be hard to match up. She's good. I mean, I brag on all the time. She's one of my former students too. So I'm always proud of saying, <laughs> I'm going I'm to take credit for some of it. <laughs> I got to take some credit. <laughs> Formative years, you uh, uh oh, yeah. guided her to be a CPA, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, we had a stormwater meeting yesterday, got an update on a lot of the projects that are going on. Uh, they, were, they we contracted out two uh, two sets of uh, of work that uh, the city couldn't get to, is obviously we're limited on employees. Uh, they it was uh cost about 17,000 and they removed, I believe it was 92 tons of uh, uh, silt, trash, debris. things like that, debris. Um, we have a problem where, because some of this debris was actually trash. People are not using dump sites. There was mattresses and things like that involved in it. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we need to, if, number one, if that happens, we need to know it's there. Number two, if we see it happen, we need to report it. So keep keeping that in mind. Um, there is a uh, TIF committee committee meeting the 30th at noon, and uh, I would encourage anybody interested in that to, uh, to come to it. With that, we will recess the council meeting. I would take a motion to convene as McAllister Airport Authority, motion to include approval of minutes from the August 13th, 2019 regular meeting of McAllister Airport Authority, confirm action taken on city council agenda, agenda item C and to adjourn. 
Motion Councilman Smith, second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? Corey Chicola, please. Councilman Smith? Yes. Reed? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor? Yes, right. and the motion carries. We now take a motion to convene as McAllister Public Works Authority. Motion to include approval of minutes from the August 13th, 2019 regular meeting of McAllister Public Works Authority. Confirm action taken on City Council agenda item C and one and to adjourn. Motion Council Reed, second Council Smith. Any discussion? Courage call roll, please. Councilman Reed? Yes. Smith? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Pritchard? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. <laughs> now take a motion to convene as McAllister Retirement Trust Authority. Motion to include approval of minutes from the July 23rd, 2019 regular meeting of McAllister Retirement Trust Authority. Uh, approval of retirement benefits for the period of August 2019 and to adjourn. Motion Councilman Smith, second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? Court, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Yes. Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Mayor? Yes, and the motion carries. We now reconvene as City Council to take a motion to adjourn. Motion Councilman Smith, second Councilman Reed. Any discussion? Court, would you call the roll, please? Councilman Smith? Yes. Reed? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Brown? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Richard? Yes. Mayor? Yes. We're adjourned. Thank you, guys. No question about streets.